blessings before this wonderful message from my father in the lord late archbishop bensi idaosa i'd like to share information about anointedtube.com with you the number one christian video sharing website today anointedtube.com this is a powerful site believed to be the top most Christian video sharing website in the world today. It is ranked as one of the best video sharing website according to available data. It hosts videos of preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from all around the world. You can as well share our video on all social media platforms. The World Database of Christian Precious, positively touching and changing lives around the world. It is a great Christian video sharing website. The Lord bless you. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. for one minute and I want you to do something for me you are in a Bible church am I correct yeah. the pastor here is not dead am I right yeah. and you are alive am I right yeah. but I want you to do something for me look at someone's two eyeballs <laughs> and say from now neighbor I want the devil to know your name that you are a child of God. You didn't hear what I said? Did you hear what I said? You say, what in the world? What in the world? Yeah, the Bible said, the devil said, Jesus I know. Peter I know. Who are you? Did you know that that is in the Bible? Yeah. It's time for the devil to know whom the saints are. Yeah. 
Give God a hand and sit down. Sit down. Since 1987 March, the gospel of Jesus Christ in the whole planet Earth has faced such a tribulation and trial that the church has never had in 50 years. The challenge has so come to ministers and ministries that almost the saints were to deny that Jesus is King of King and Lord of Lord. Through the stories that the newspaper carried, through Ted Couple, through ABC, CNN, NBC, CBS, men like him and me and few others that go around the world has been asked, is God still there or he bowed out? Particularly if you are from America. The stories that the media distributed around the whole world almost made people say, if this is all that is in Christianity, that's enough. But you know in the face of it all, more people are coming to the kingdom today than ever before in history. Because salvation is not in any other name than the name of Jesus. Some people have slacked in tight pain because of what the media said, some slack in offering giving, in project supporting because of what the media said in North Carolina, in Baton Rouge, and different places. And I began to ask myself, was there ever a time in the Bible that the church Pass through such a detaining, disgraceful, shameful time in the scripture. And when I read through the Bible, over 200 times, over 200 places, I discovered that almost you would have thought the devil is now in charge. But suddenly, God will come down and say, I'm still here. I've not changed. Man may change. Government may change. People may change. But Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And I began to sum up courage when Pastor Benny Hinn invited me here. You know, the hardest place to preach is where the pastor is a preacher. If you are going to a church where the pastor makes noise, it's not hard. If you are going to a place where the pastor tells stories, it's not hard. But where you go to, when you go to a place where the pastor is a preacher, you have to ask God for a scripture. And that's what I did. And I'm glad I'm here. So you sit down and let me preach. Everybody say hallelujah. hallelujah. In the gospel of the book of Kings, and I want you to look at it tonight. Second Kings chapter 2. A prophet lived in Israel. He just graduated from a Bible school where his boss went to heaven in wild wind of fire. He saw this prophet honor God with the words of his mouth. He saw this prophet 
do great and mighty things. And this prophet said, before I leave, I teach you how to live in a society that denied the power of God. And he said, one of the things I'm going to teach you is how not to humiliate yourself in the hand of the Lord. Is how not to allow yourself to be used by the devil as a vacuum to suit the floor. Is how not to accept any suggestion of destruction that the devil put in your mind. This prophet began to teach the young prophet. It was not a Bible school of the prophet, but a Bible school of God's power in the night. I hear people say they are students of the school of prophet. It's not in the Bible. I'm telling you, it's not there. To go to school to learn how to prophesy, it's not in the Bible. You can prophesy without going to Bible school. Can you say amen? amen. You say, what do you mean? I mean that you can prophesy without going to Bible school. If you know Jesus, you receive the gift of prophecy, you prophesy. Have I offended you? All right. So this prophet began to say, follow me and watch how I'm going to end my career. The king of the land didn't want to hear anything about the church. He was tired of the power that made heaven and earth. So he said, I'm going to do one thing. I'm going to send my soldiers... They are going to capture the man of God. They are going to kill him. And that will be the end of the power of the gospel in that land. And he sent and said, go capture this man. I will show the whole world that tithe and offering is wasteful exercise. While he was discussing that in his house, the spirit of God told the man of God, that 50 men were coming to tie him, take him to the king, and they'll bring him before the open market and say, where is your God? And this man of God, who was not very humble like some preachers of today, who was not ready to be allowed, to allow God to use him for a disgraceful exercise, prepared. And in 2 King chapter 1, verse 10, we are told, And Elijah answered and said to the captain of 50, If I be a man of God, If I be a man of God, let fire come down from heaven and consume thee and thy fifty. And there came down, and there came down. And there came down. And there came down. Fire from heaven. And consumed him. And his 50. Get up and shout hallelujah if you believe in the Bible. As if you believe in the Bible, stand to your feet and shout hallelujah. If you believe that this is the word of God, shout hallelujah. Pastor him, there's time to accept the insult. There is time when you don't know God. People say, your God is dead. If you don't know God, people can make jest of your God. 
Elijah said, not me. He said, God, if you are still there, and if I'm your man, and if you are my God, show it. Show it. Now, send fire from heaven. Consume the enemy of the gospel. Everybody shout hallelujah. <laughs> he didn't say, if I sing in the choir. He didn't say, if I play the trumpet. He didn't say, if I'm a preacher. He didn't say, if I pay tight. He didn't say, if I go to Tulsa. He didn't say, if I go to Dallas. He didn't say, if I'm a Sunday school teacher. He didn't say, if I speak in tongues. He didn't say, if I'm a good storyteller. He said, if I be a man of God. If I be a man of God. If I be a woman of God, if God is still alive, send down fire from heaven that they may know you are my God. Everybody shout hallelujah. He didn't say, if I go to church. He didn't say, if I know how to play organ, he said, if truly I'm a man of God, let it be known. Let it be known that I'm truly a man. I am a man of God. That is lacking in the church today. Let me tell you this. At the age of 24, as a young preacher, I was at the church. I was an evangelist. I was press ambassador director. And my pastor stood up one day, Benny Hinn, And he said, Jesus said, Everybody say, Jesus said. Jesus said. Cast, out Cast out devils. Heal the sick. Heal the sick. Cleanse, the Cleanse the lepers. Raise the dead. Raise the dead. I said, who said? Jesus who said? said? Who said? Jesus said? Who said? Jesus said? To whom? To, to the church. I went to my pastor. I said, Pastor, did you say Jesus said, I can cast out devils? He said, yes. Everybody said, yes. yes. Can I heal the sick? Yes. Can I clean the lepers? Yes. Can I raise the dead? Yes. yes. Oh, my God. Everybody shout hallelujah. Church, cast out devils, church, heal the sick, church, cleanse the lepers, church, raise the dead. I said, Pastor, that's good for me. I said, have you done it? He said, no. I said, can I do it? He said, what? What? Yes. Can I do it? Yes. Can you do it? Yes. Do you want to do it? Yes. Everybody say yes. yes. Oh, hallelujah. I took my bicycle. That was my Rolls Royce. That was my 747. That was my DC-10. I took my bicycle and I took my Bible 
And I went from street to street. Is anybody dead here? Do you have anybody dead here? Do you have anybody dead here? My God. Anyone died here? And somebody said, what are you looking for the dead for? Ask me. Ask me. Ask me. Be bold. My pastor told me to raise them up. In my city, not in Jerusalem, not in Orlando, my own city, from house to house, is anybody dead? They said no. Is anybody dead? No. From 11 o'clock in the morning, half past four in the afternoon, I got to a house where somebody finally died. Everybody say hallelujah. I said, do you have anybody there? They say, here is one. They say, what do you want to do with him or her? I said, I've come to raise the dead from the dead. They say, here you are with one. And I said, glory to God. Everybody say, glory to God. I took the child, three years old. And I carried this child. And I looked at the child. I didn't know left from right. I've never done it before. And my pastor said he has not done it, but I can do it. That's difficult if he has not done it. And he said, I can do it. So I said, baby, be healed. No answer. Baby, oh God, be healed. He died the more. What? Reduce the air condition, please. I said, my pastor said I can raise you. I cried, no answer. I wept, no answer. So I turned to the Bible where he read. You shall cast out devil. You shall heal the sick. Cleanse the leper. Raise the dead. Then I put the baby down and found where Jesus raised the dead. And I saw where he said. The Bible said, he drove all of them out. So I said, fine. Father, mother, friends, all of you out. <laughs> Benny hands, and they all left the house. And they said, what do you want to do? I said, Jesus, drove them out. I should drive you out. And I drove them out. And they stood at the corridor. And I read. He said unto her, Damsel, I say unto thee, arise. So I called them back. I said, what's the name of your child? The girl in the Bible is Damsel. What's your child's name? Don't laugh at me. Don't laugh at me. I didn't know left from right, but I went to raise the dead. Shout hallelujah. And they said, the name of the girl is Inuata. So I said, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Inuata, I command you, rise up right now in Jesus' name. And in five seconds, Everybody say five seconds. Five the girl sneezed. She sneezed and rose up. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. I say hallelujah. I didn't have. Doctor of Divinity. 
I didn't have certificate from Bible school. I was not a professor from Zoe Bible College. I was a novice who wanted to try it. And it worked. It worked. It worked. It worked. It worked. Jesus has not changed. The power of God has not changed. Salvation has not changed. The blood of Jesus, God's own son, is still available for miracles. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. She got up. And I began to dance with a dead baby. And I said, let me read the Bible again. She said, he said to them, give her food. And I said, bring food. And she ate. And, and he gave her to the mother. And I took the baby. And I gave to the mother. I said, I'm going to look for another one. I went around the whole town. I didn't find any. The next week, none. Three weeks time, eight years old boy died. If I did it on a girl, male and female created he them. And I took the boy, eight years old. They said he died yesterday evening. And they are looking for casket for him this morning. I said, you don't need to worry. I'm here. I'm here. Everybody say, I'm here. I'm here. Say, I'm here. I'm here. That's why you are born again. Amen. To save the lost. To heal the sick. Amen. To raise the dead. Amen. To cleanse the lepers. Amen. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. You thought you were saved so you can jack in the church. You told you we are born again so you can speak in tongue and turn around seven times. <laughs> Salvation is more than falling and rising. Amen. Salvation is go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth shall be saved. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> that boy got up after my prayer. And in a few days, my gate is full. For all the sick in my town, all the blind in my city, all the deaf in my city, all the dumb in my city. I tried it by mistake, and it happened by mistake. Yes, and since that time, over eight people have seen God raised from the dead. <laughs> you say... You have the gift of raising the dead. No. If I have the gift of raising the dead, I put a big sign in my door. Come unto me, all ye that are dead, and I shall raise you up. <laughs> That's not my calling. And the greatest time in my life is when I stand before half a million people, one million people, 100,000 people, and proclaim, Jesus Christ is the same. Yesterday, today, forevermore. Amen. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Elijah said, if I be, he didn't say if you think I am. He didn't say if you wish I am. He didn't say if I think I am. He said if I am. If I be a man of God, shame Demons, bow. Sickness, bow. Diseases, bow. Fear, bow. And fire, come down. And fire came down from heaven. You never 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 have sound testimony if the devil will turn you 
your racket for playing ball. No one in Orlando will respect you if you are going to become a hoover for the devil to sweep the carpet. It's time for the church to say, if I be a man, everybody say man. Amen. Elijah, Pastor Hens, they didn't say, if we be men of God. He didn't say, if we be church. If he didn't say, Elijah didn't say, if we are members of Orlando Christian Center. He said, if I, are you a man of God? Yes. Are you a man of God? Yes. When was the last time you cast out devil? Are you a woman of God? Yes. When was the last time you said, don't bury that person, give me? When was the last time you said, give me the casket for offering? I want to sell it to pay tithe, but I give you your debt charge. It's time for the church to show the world there is power in Jesus' name. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. The next verse. The next verse. Verse 11. Again. Everybody say again. again. I didn't hear you. Again. One more time. Again. again. Also. Whew, you thought temptation is once. And some of you think the devil has gone on vacation. He's at home. Hasn't gone on vacation. He's still alive. You still see thunder every day. You still see earthquake every day. You see, you see plane crash every day. You see the Iran and Iraq fighting. You see the Arab war hijacking Arab people. You see the people that are hijacking aircraft. You see people that are killing one another. You see people that are murdering each other. You still see rape in town. That is not the work of God. It is the work of the devil. He came to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But Jesus came that we may have life and have it more in abundance. After the death of 50 men by fire, the Bible said, Pastor Him, again, I thought that would have taught the devil's children lesson, but they don't learn until you teach them again and again and again and again. If the devil comes to your house seven times a day, cast him out ten times. Yeah. How many will say hallelujah? hallelujah? No time for negotiation. Don't say, devil, do you want to go? No, tell him to go. Yeah. Tell him to go. Yeah. Tell him to go. Yeah. From your business, go. From your marriage, go. From your children, go. From your finances, go. Devil, go. <laughs> 1984. My wife and I got a new car, Pastor Benny. And on our street, a man just moved to that neighborhood. And he had a German shepherd dog, four feet high from the ground. We just moved to that neighborhood. And the dog had never seen Mercedes before. Mercedes, Mercedes car. That's what I use. If you're angry, bury your head in shame. And this dog pursued us. When we are going to the church, he will pursue us half a mile.
you can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. from gear 4 to gear 2 to gear 1 and this dog will still pursue us. When he's tired, we'll go back. One day we are coming from the church. I just finished casting out devils. I was sweating like no man's business. And when we are coming, as we bent to enter our street, this dog pursued us again. And my wife said, honey, move, 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 move. My wife pinned all the lockers inside for a dog outside. And the dog pursued us. And I heard. Everybody say, I heard. I heard. One more time. I heard. Apply your brake. Pardon? Pardon? One more time. And on that top of the street, I put my leg on the brake. And the dog didn't know I was going to apply my brake. And hit the head on the bonnet of the car and lost his jaw. And turned around. He was like, what, 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 what? And the dog ran and turned back. And the Lord said, next time when devil pursue you, apply your break. Yeah. Resist the devil. Resist the devil. And he shall flee from you. The Bible didn't say run from the devil and he shall run from you. Bind him. Resist him. And he shall flee from you. If you love the Lord, say hallelujah. So I learned that day, and I said to my wife, we would have done this two months ago. And after that day, when the dogs see our car, <laughs> and I said, that's so. You mean if I stand against Goliath as David did? The Lord will put his head in my hands. Did you hear me? Yes. Did you hear me? Yes. Are you listening to me? Yes. Don't let the devil take your job and you begin to sing. The Lord gave, the Lord took. The Lord never gave and takes. 
It is the devil that steals your money. It's the devil that steals your children. It's the devil that steals your job. It's the devil that steals your joy. And the best thing you need to do is to bind him and command him to leave. In the name above all other names, the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Shout hallelujah! Again! Also, verse 11. Shall we read it together? Are you there? Yes. Open your Bible. Look at it. One to go. And again. Verse 12. And Elijah answered and said unto them, If I be a man of God, let fire come down from heaven and consume thee and thy fifty. And the fire of God came from heaven and consumed him and his fifty. Brother, did you hear me? If I be me, everyone say me, me. be me. Man. man, man, woman, woman. Of, God. of God, think about it. You know how many things you've lost because you never reminded yourself. Because you failed to remind yourself. The Spirit of Jesus is in me. Yes. Romans 8 says, the same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwell in you. Your mortal body shall be quickened by the Holy Spirit. Elijah said, Father, let them know in Orlando, I am a man of God. And I can see God say, Son, that's good. Everybody say, Son. That's good. That's good. I can picture God from heaven. Smiling and say, Elijah, you sure know you're right. You surely know what to do. 1972, October. My wife and I were in the house sleeping. And 3 a.m., I had some missionaries visiting me from England. We have no air condition. We have no fan. We have newspapers. <laughs> and these British friends from Liverpool are not used to newspaper air condition. <laughs> so they opened their window down for air to come in and three o'clock in the morning seven men thieves came to my house three o'clock in the morning and they saw the window opened and they lifted the head of one of the missionaries and said get up bring your money and he jumped up he said who are you they said we are men of underworld. And he said, I'm not the owner of the house. I'm a visitor. So he passed. He got out of his room. He said, let me call the landlord. <laughs> Say hallelujah. So he came to my section. And he called my wife. Mrs. Idahosa. Mrs. Idahosa. 
I was speaking in tongues on my knees. She got up and said, yes, what is it? He said, there are seven men outside. They said they are thieves and they want money. And my wife burst in tongues. No, the pastors in my house, eight of them began to speak in tongues. And the thief said, shut up! And they shut up. They closed their mouth. And they came to me, they said, there are seven thieves. <coughs> they want to take our properties. I said, who? They said, thieves. They said, let us pray. I said, I prayed before they came. Everybody said, I prayed before they came. I, I marched to the door. I took my Bible. I said, who do you say you are? They said, we are men of the night. I said, I'm the man of the afternoon. I said, are you ready for me? They said, no, sir. I said, hold on five minutes. I'm going to kill all of you right now. And seven men fled and jumped to the bush. You don't need to wait till terminal time before you ask for a doctor. When your case becomes incurable, you die if you don't know you're right. But if you can bind headache, you can bind cancer. If you can bind fever, you can bind ulcer. If you can lose the mentally derided man, you can raise the dead. How many will say amen? No time to negotiate with the devil. Elijah didn't say, excuse me, let me see who can bail me. Let me see who can help me. He said, if I be, if I be a man of God, let fire from heaven come down here. Can you talk like that? What would have you done if, if 50 men came to your house in Orlando? And you know they came to kill you. You know what some of you would have done? <laughs> Pastor Benny here. When was the last time you reacted to the attack of the enemy? When was the last time you rebelled against fever? When was the last time you said, Headache, if I be a man of God, leave me. Poverty, if I be a man of God, out and prosperity in. If I be a man of God, that's what I'm here for tonight. To get the men and women of God who want to do miracle in the name of God. Jesus hasn't changed. Jimmy Swaggart may make mistake. Jim Baker may make mistake. Anybody can make mistakes. Jesus has not made mistakes. He's alive. He's alive. Three years ago, Pastor Him, all the witches in the world met in Chicago to hold their first conference in Africa. You know where they want to hold it? My city. <laughs> My city. And their chief host granted the network interview and he said the first universal conference of witches and wizards is going to hold in Benin. And I said, what? Where? 
They say, where I live. So I said, it's not true. Everybody says, it's not true. I didn't hear you. One more time. And the press said, what is not true? I said, they can't come. They said, what are you going to do? I said, I'm going to kill all of them. <laughs> and they called the chief host and said, Dr. Inahosa said, you can't hold the meeting. He said, not even God can stop it. I will bring you the newspaper. He said, not even God can stop it. And the press said, listen to what this man said. He said, not even God. I said, he's correct. They said, he's correct. I said, yes. They said, why? I said, because God shouldn't waste his time. I'm here. one to me. <laughs> I can handle this. And I said, how many are there? He said, 9,800. So I said, good. <laughs> Everybody said, good. good. I love challenges. <laughs> because challenges are scaffolding to higher height in faith. It's time for people to find out whom you are in Orlando. It's time for people to know that God put you here in Orlando. If they cannot tell by your clapping, by your dancing, they can tell by your fire. Did you hear me? If you don't know whom you are because you sing in the choir, because you pay your tithe, they can know whom you are when you raise the dead. Everybody say, fire come, down. fire, come down. Say, fire, come down. Fire, come down. And the media men came to my house. They said, Dr. Idahosa, you are taking a risk. I said, what? They said, be careful. I said, People who take care don't take charge. And people who take charge don't take care. For my Bible says, be careful for nothing. <laughs> but by prayers and supplication, make your request known to God. And they said, are you ready to face the camera to tell the whole nation what you are saying? And which I called this man, I said, call two of us. They brought him to this I believe this message is blessing you. Please visit and share videos on anointedtube.com, the world database of Christian preachers, to help us reach 100 million people. The message continues after this video about Anointed Tube. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small 
or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preacher's pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. anyone to die among you. <laughs> Chief host, are you really sure you are bringing 9,800 witches from all over the world? He said yes. Dr. Idahusa, are you sure you are going to stop the meeting? I said, I'm not going to stop it. I've stopped it. <laughs> I have stopped it. Are you ready? We want to grant you one hour to tell us how strong your God is and you tell us how your witchcraft is. He said, I'm ready. And I said, fine. But at the end of this program, you let me pray because I'm going to kill him. <laughs> and they brought us to the camera and they asked him, <laughs> I said, they ask him, tell us how strong witches are. And he told us. For 27 minutes, he quoted from the Old Testament, from 6 or 7 book of Moses, from Egyptian books, from Israeli book, from British book, from magical book. And they said to me, did you hear him? I said, yes. They said, what do you say? I said, I have nothing to say. The meeting is canceled. <laughs> they said, why? And I opened my Bible. No divination scroll. No incantation scroll. She has turned the presence of the righteous. And I began to quote from Leviticus to the New Testament. And at the end, I said, how many minutes more? He said, five. I said, it's time for me to kill this man. <laughs> I said, sir, just answer me one word, and I kill you. And everybody began to panic. <laughs> As they say, yes or no, are you a witch? He said, no. I said, get up. If you say yes, I kill you. But if you are not, and he said, I'm not. To <laughs> up in the studio, network news, Tobomohi, Korolo, Bomo, Japanabad, and Dosoporidia. And I said, If you had accepted your will, I kill you. The next morning, he came to my office to collect a Bible. And they still met him. The media left us and they still went to his house. With the meeting hold, yes. Seven days more. Three days more with the meeting hold, yes. And they came to me. Are you sure the meeting is canceled? I said, no comment. If the meeting hold, I set fire in my Bible. It's canceled. What I bind on earth is bound in heaven. And they said, what is your power? I said, my power is in the Bible. Whatsoever you lose on earth is lose in heaven. Whatsoever you bind on earth 
is born in heaven. And they said, but two days more. I said, don't waste your time. The next morning, I went to the president's office. And I said, I've told the whole nation, and you are aware, that there's no meeting of the witches and wizards. He said, the day you were on TV, I sent telex to all the embassies in the world not to allow one wizard to come to Nigeria. Today, today, the constitution of Nigeria is the only constitution I know in the whole world where it is written, no man should practice witchcraft. Because of what I said, they put it in the constitution. You cannot practice witchcraft in Nigeria. What you bind on earth can be bound in heaven. If I be a man of God, let fire come down from heaven. It's time for the church to know whom they are. Say, I'm a man of God. Amen. Say, I'm a, I'm a man of God. If you're a woman, say, you're a woman of God. Woman of God. Are you there? If you know your right in Christ, every demon in Orlando will be afraid of you. Nineteen eighty five, the government of Nigeria announced no more tracks, no more crusade, no more open air in the whole nation. And I went to my room and knelt down. Father, what did you say? And God said, What do you say? I said, Father, what do you say? And he said, Son, what do you say? He said, what do you want? I said, I want the whole crusade. He said, you can go ahead. I said, I can go ahead. He said, yes. And I sent for Bunky. I said, Reha Bunky, I have two big crusades. Can you join me? He agreed to come. In April 1985, March 1985, for the first time in my friend's life, he saw half a million people face to face for five nights in Ibadan when the government said, no more crusade. Wow. In the whole city of Ibadan, on Friday, all the mosques closed to come to my crusade. Then I said, thank you, Lord. Everybody said, thank you, Lord. And he said, son, where do you want to go next? I said, Washington of Nigeria, Lagos. And he said, you can do it. And I printed one and a half million handbills and 50,000 posters and hired 2,000 ushers to distribute it around the whole city of Lagos. Yeah. And that's the first time I saw with my two eyes one million people every night in a crusade. When the government said no more, and God said, go ahead. Yeah. If I be a man of God, let fire come down. Devil has made fun enough of your business. Stand up tomorrow and say, Business, I change you. Look at your bank passbook and say, This red is not good. 
be green in Jesus' name. Look at your marriage that the devil is fighting. I say, you demon of confusion in marriage. Get out. If I be a woman of God, Satan, leave my husband from drinking. I lose him from drinking. I lose him from smoking. I lose him from the works of the enemy. When I became a Christian, Pastor Henry, my mother had eight of us, only me, a Christian. And I said, God, what do I do? He said, son, what do you want to do? That's the problem I have with God. Every time I ask him a question, he asks me back. <laughs> he said, what do you want to do? I said, I want my sisters, four, to be saved. I want my brothers, three plus me, saved. He said, you can have them. So I began to call them name one by one. And today, all of them are in the same ministry with me. If I be a man of God, let fire, not snow, not ice blocks, not diet Pepsi, not diet Coke, let fire. Everybody say fire. fire. The world needs to see fire. For they know you serve the risen Christ. Are you ready? The next verse. Verse 13. Shall we read it together? Let's stand up. Let's stand up. Let's stand to our feet. I say, let's stand to our feet. Oh, <laughs> Hmm. And he sent again. Everybody say again. Amen. Aren't you surprised, Pastor Benny Hens, that devil is not tired of attacking? You know, some of you think when you speak in tongues, then the devil takes his baggage and leaves. No. You continue to bind him Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Until God sent him to the bottomless pit. Yes, right. How many will say amen to that? Yes. You can't stop the devil from doing his job. His job is to kill, to steal, and to destroy. But he shouldn't stop you from doing your job. Your job is to bind and to lose. Can you say amen? amen. That's all. He knows his job. Your job is to cast him out. His job is to try to destroy you. Your job is to destroy him. Hasn't the Bible said it is better to give than to receive? <laughs> Cast him out. <laughs> Verse 13. <laughs> and he sent again a captain of the third fifty. Or oh, one man. One man. Listen. And the third captain of fifty went up. And came and fell on his knees before Elijah and besought him and said unto him, O oh man, everybody read it. Oh man. Let me hear you loud. Oh man Again. Oh man, oh man of God. What did Elijah say he is? Amen. What did the devil's children say he is? Amen. Amen. Don't call fire upon me. Spare me and my men. It's time for devil's children to kneel before you. And look at your face as, oh man of God. Oh man of God. Oh man of God. Oh man, oh woman of God. You've tolerated nonsense enough. Yeah. It's time for you to rebel against sickness. Yeah. It's time for you to say no to poverty. Yeah. 
It's time for you to say no to cancer. It's time for you to say no to diseases. It's time for you to say no to shortages. I said, devil, if I be a man of God, leave me alone. How many want the power of God tonight? Raise your hand and begin to worship him right now. Lift up your hand and open your mouth and begin to worship him right now. Open your mouth and worship him right now. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. In the name above all other names. Receive power from on high. Receive power from the throne of God. To do exploit for the kingdom. Power to raise the dead. Power to heal the sick. Power to lose the bound. Power to cleanse lepers. Power. Power. Open your mouth. 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 Worship him. Worship him. Worship him. Worship him. Worship God. Worship God. Worship God. Worship God. Worship God. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. 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 It's time to receive. 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 The power of God. The power of God. Jesus is here tonight. I said Jesus is here tonight. Jesus is here tonight. He's here with power. He's here with healing. He's here with miracles. I'm going to pray for the sick tonight. But before we pray for the sick, is there anybody who wants the fire of God in his or her life? If you want fire to fall from heaven, Upon your tongue, and upon your hand, and upon your ministry, and upon your business. I'm going to ask you to take the step of it and rush from where you are. Move forward. If you are tired of frozen Christianity, if you need fire in your ministry, just live where you were. Just live where you were. Just live where you were. Move forward. Live where you were. That's the way. That's the way. If you are tired of frozen Christianity, if you are tired of the devil attacking your job, if you are tired of the devil attacking your business, if you are tired of the devil attacking your husband, your wife, your children, your home, your life, everything about you, it's time to say, oh God, send fire from heaven to touch me. Listen to me. Listen to me. You never get respect from the devil until you tell him, I'm a child of God. Yes. Orlando Times will not do that for you. Channel 6, Channel 5, Channel 9, Channel 12, Channel 0 cannot do it for you. Channel your mouth can do it. If thou shalt say to this mountain, be thou removed. If thou shalt say, he didn't say if thou shalt jerk. If thou shalt fall. If thou shalt cry. If thou shalt say. It's time for the children of God to say. Poverty, I'm too handsome to be like you. <laughs> Sickness, Hallelujah. from the crown of my head to the sole of my feet, I belong to God. Hallelujah. Do you hear me? Yes. Elijah said, if I, I like that. He didn't say if we be. We may be, but I want to be. A man of God. And when the enemy soldiers came, they bowed yeah. and fell yeah. and said, 
ओम जीसस से Till I make thy enemy thy first two. They knelt down. And I can hear God say, son, say whatever you want to say. <laughs> But keep them there until they know I am your father. Every time you pray miracle prayer, heaven smiles. Every time you cast out devil I can see God with his white throne say so that's my daughter she knows her right <laughs> she knows what to do with my name <laughs> she knows what to do why should sinners prosper and saints suffer is he glorant somebody think the poorer they are the sooner they'll see God no No unclean thing shall see heaven. Poverty is a disgrace to God. Yes. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Yes. Oh. You can be free. You can perform a miracle. If you are born again. Glory. You are a child of the living God. Yes. If you have received Jesus, yes, you are a man of God. Yes. If you have received Jesus, you are a woman of God. Yes. And it's time for sickness to bow. Yes. And look at you and say, "Oh man of God. I believe. Hallelujah. You're a man of God." Hallelujah. It's time for diseases yes. to look at you. Last year we were in convention and my driver drove out and they took my wife's car from him robbers snatched the car and they came and told my wife and my wife said father i give you 12 hours send my car back to my garage everybody say father in 12 hours return my car to my garage I pay tight. I give offering. I owe you nothing. Send my car back. How many will say hallelujah? I said, "Honey, can I pray for you?" She said, "No, I pray." My car is coming back. Everybody say my car is coming back. And I said, "Can we go and tell the police?" She said if you want them to have testimony tell them but if you don't want them to have it in their record for testimony don't bother yourself my car is coming back I've checked my tight card I owe nothing I've checked my offering record I owe nothing and the car belong to me I say if I be a man of God fire come down yes. from heaven yes. the bible say a fire came down yes. it's not smoke that came down it's not ice that came down it's not snow that came down elijah did not ask for snow he asked for fire and fire came down shout hallelujah hallelujah 9 hours later two policemen came to our house The car that your driver came I didn't know my driver went to report. They said there's a car we saw few streets away. Everything inside it looks like your wife's own. My wife said it doesn't look like it is bring it. <laughs> And in 9 hours the car was back to garage. You know what happened when the thieves opened the locker they saw my picture. and they said mm mm <laughs> everyone said mm mm 
Say it again. <laughs> One more time. <laughs> They left the license, they left the radio, they left everything inside and left the key there. Beautiful. If I be a man of God, yeah. let fire come down from heaven. Hallelujah. I want to pray a short prayer. I've read my Bible, Pastor Hines. Every time Jesus performed magnificent miracle, it took him one minute. If he was going to say to the lepers, be cleansed, he didn't climb the mountain seven times. Bring that man here. Sir, shh. Where is he? Come with your walking can. Come with it. Moromo Sokoloro, Dodoro, Pilabaya Bata Soko, Rondo Mohipo, Yaralabaya Tasa. Carry him, carry him, help him, help him, help him, help him. Breathe him by Yatasando do, Edilalama Yatasai, Prodo Lomoya, Potomo say, Mendom, Mondom, 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 be loose, be loose. In Jesus' name of Nazareth, be loose. From the crown of your head to the sole of your feet, be healed now. In Jesus' name. Everyone say amen. amen. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now.
Idausa is my father. My first encounter with uh, Archbishop Idahosa, he was doing a big crusade uh, in the center of Accra, which is called Circle. He said, if your faith say yes, God cannot say no. Idausa is a man that believe with God, all things are possible. He had an unwavering faith. He had an unshaking faith. He had an unbreaking faith. He had faith in God. He saw God as he's talking to a faithful father. He saw God like his son will see a father who he trusts that is faithful. Whatever I ask my daddy to do, he will do it. That was Idaosa's level of faith, beyond mass uh, explanation. He had faith. Spiritual, a person, yet he was so human in nature. A man who reached out to everyone, the high, and the law in society. A man who rubs shoulders with presidents and the highest of dignitaries you can think of in society. I feel very blessed because the Lord has called me to preach the word of God in Africa and particularly in Nigeria. Um, I've been here with my husband 40 years now. It, it's a blessing. And it's particularly been a blessing to work with Papa Idahosa and Mama Idahosa. When you talk about legacy, I remember traveling with Archbishop Idahosa to Kaduna for the consecration of Bishop Oyudepo. I think it's Faith Liberation Chapel. I remember it as if it is today. And uh, Archbishop said, we are going. And when we got to Benin Airport, uh, Okada, uh, that's chief, Igbinidion had given him an aircraft. So we flew from Benin City Airport to Kaduna. And I carried, and it was there he told me, in the preach, he said, this is my son. At the point, at that time, I didn't really know Bishop Edipo. This must have been early in the 80s or something. And then many, a couple of weeks after, Bishop Edipo came to Church of God Mission Sunday evening service. And I remember the first message he preached, it was on the prodigal son. The man brought me out from the dungeon. Papa Idahosa was, he was a man full of energy and vision. Uh, he, he, he was always getting, moving on from one project to another. And often when he started a new project, we whites, we Oibos would say, why is he doing that? We couldn't see the vision at all. We thought, hmm, this is very funny. But then, sometime later, we would realize, oh yes, okay, I see why he's done that now. And I was a Muslim that I gave my life to Christ. In Ghana, there was this kind of freedom of worship. There were a lot of Muslims. And among those people that were the grace of God, I gave my life to Christ. And I wanted to go to Bible school when I felt the call of God upon my life. And unfortunately for me, at that particular time, with the Assemblies of God Ghana, there was no space for women to go to Bible school. So my pastor called me and said, he wants me to go to Nigeria and meet with Indahosa because there is a room in that particular ministry for women. And I traveled to Nigeria by the grace of God on getting there. I met with the Archbishop, my first time of meeting the Archbishop in the Hosa of Church of God Mission International. What an awesome privilege it was to see this man of faith and boldness. I will never forget the Onicha Crusade. At that time, the head of state in Nigeria had passed the law that nobody should do open air crusades. And Archbishop said he went to pray and said, God, God, what they are saying, and God asked him, what do you want? He said, I want to do crusade. God said, go ahead and do your crusade. So he sent us, I was part of the uh, 
uh, advanced team to go and paste posters all over Onicha. And we went to put posters all over Onicha. And the first day of the crusade, a truckload of soldiers came. The man of faith, the man of prayer, the man of courage, the man of peace. And Archbishop mounted the platform and, and the soldiers came with their guns. When Archbishop started preaching, they all put their guns down. When he made the altar call, they all raised their hands to receive Jesus as Lord and personal Savior. And we stood there and the whole crusade was an eye-opener for us. And right there, I decided I needed to go and know more from this man. Fortunately, he was offering scholarship for people who want to attend Bible school in Benin, All Nation for Christ Bible Institute. And so that particular year, I uh, requested, I wrote, and fortunately, I was invited to come. So uh, we went to Nigeria to begin uh, my class. Actually, I went there in 79. My class started in 1980. And uh, we went through the Bible training, and it was powerful. We were all charged up. He started uh, the Word of Faith schools. He started the Christian Hospital, Faith Mediplex. He started Benson Ida Hosea University, all those. And well, he's, he's a man we can't, we can't forget. He was a great example to us. And I thank God. It's particularly good for us, whites, British, because in Britain, uh, people are rather skeptical these days. You'll not find many people who are really born again Christians. Um, people of faith are few in Britain, but if we can come here and our faith can be uh, increased, can be inspired, particularly by the things that Papa did, we are blessed. Let me share this. And I think for those who were around in Church of God Mission at that time, we traveled to Washington for Jesus. John Geminis went to Baltimore, flew to New York, and then flew to Lagos on Nigeria with 11 hours. And then we took Okada from Okada Air from Lagos to Benin City. It was bad weather. Brother, it was one turbulence I, I told God, as long as I'm alive, never let me face anything like this again in my travel. I'm sure Dausa and the wife Margaret were in the first class, which is only divided by a kettle because it's a 90 seater plane. And we took off from Lagos to Benin. It was bad weather, raining cats and dogs. We rented a storm. There were Filipino pilots. And then they said that he has lost contact. The pilot said, listen, he has lost contact with Lagos. And so he doesn't know where he is. That is ridiculous. You are supposed to be taking us to Benin. So if you, the pilot, has lost contact and you don't know where you are, and it's raining cats and dogs, what do you want us to do? And when I looked through the wood, brother, I was sitting at the edge of my seat like this. I was shaking in my boots. I'd never been scared like that. I thought I was, I, it, it was a life and death situation. The plane will move, dive, turn left, turn right. When I looked through the curtain, I was looking at the reaction of the Abishoy Dausa, who said, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And then one time he stood up in the aircraft lifted his hand. I will never forget. He said, God, this is what he said, God, you called me and you didn't say I would die in a plane crash. My mission is not finished. My assignment is not over. We call the enemy to order and command the devil to back up. Now you pilot, you better find out where you are and take us to our destination in the name of Jesus. And he sat down. Five minutes time, the pilot said, he has made contact with Port Harcourt. Listen to this. We are supposed to be doing 30 minutes from Lagos to Benin. And the pilot, we, we landed in Port Harcourt. So we were on the, we have lost our way. We would have ended up in the sea. I will never forget. We landed in Lagos. It was still raining. 
Now that's where the testimony is. Mama is the house, then you can ask her. I told Papa, can I please go for bus? Because I was afraid, can we get a bus so we go to Benin? He said, no. James, you don't travel like I do. I must conquer the devil today in the air. I said, what is this? <laughs> I was scared. I said, Papa, you want us to die? He said, James, if I don't conquer the devil, I will not be able to travel by air. Okada gave us his gold-plated aircraft. Chief Ibnidion, he called him. The plane rolled out from the hangar, and we went by air to Benin. And that Sunday evening, he made me go to church and give a testimony. He said, Ghana boy. He calls me Ghana boy. I came and said, give them your testimony. You coward. <laughs> Another powerful miracle was when the witches in the whole world decided to come and have a meeting in Benin City. And Archbishop said, not when he's here. There won't be any such meeting. The chief priest then was summoned. His name, Chief Eboho, because he was a representative of the witches then. And he said, the meeting, nobody, not even God, could stop the witches from meeting. Then daddy said, or papa said, yes, God will not waste his time to stop you because I'm here to stop you. God has put me here to stop you. And guess what? That meeting never took place in Benin City. When you are with him one on one, you will feel an aura that defies definition. You know, it's as if you are in the presence of God, of a deity, of something that is beyond where you are you know uh, he never celebrated mediocrity he never took no for an answer he dared to go where nobody wants to go or everybody feared to go he was a man that believed in venturing where others fear to venture he was a trailblazer. I remember those days. For example, this television ministry that's becoming anything today. It also started it in 1974-75. I'm honored to have been one of his sons. And uh, by the grace of God, I think that um, that sign wonder anointing and his boldness. I was I did a meeting for Dr. Maurice Serrillo in 2010, and just before. I spoke in his world conference. They said, uh, oh, miracles don't happen in America because they have a lot of doctors. It happens in the third world. Well, when I took the microphone, I just shared my testimony. 23 cripples gave me the Aztecs and began to walk. Um, that kind of boldness to decree and declare, I took it from the late Archbishop. I believe in the transference of spirits. And I believe strongly, like God told Moses, I will take up the spirit that is upon you and I will put it upon the 70. I'm one of the people who took of that spirit of signs and wonders from the Archbishop. Making a movie of the Archbishop will really, really help the next generation because the young preachers and the young ministers that are coming up have no clue of who he was. I mean, he will still be preaching and cripples will start walking. Um, that was an awesome man of faith. I remember whilst we were in school, he went to visit and it was shown on TV. Um, we, he went to visit Kenneth Copeland. And when he got there, they, he was supposed to have gone the previous day, but he arrived late. So they announced, when they announced, that the Archbishop Idahosa has arrived. Six cripples got out of their wheelchairs. That is how anointed uh, Papa was. We must keep his legacy alive. Idahosa is dead to some people, but to us, to me, Idahosa lives.
Hello, I am Bishop Margaret Benson Idahosa, the wife of the late Archbishop Benson Idahosa that did wonders while he was on earth here. Early in the morning when I rise, I will lift up my eyes. Now let me let you know how I got to meet him. You know, in those early years, he used to ride his bicycle with some trucks going from street to street, and one of it was my street. And every time he comes, we call him pastor. Pastor, he was young then, about 21 or 22. He was very, very young, but he didn't mind. He was not ashamed of the gospel because he knew that that was the power of God in his life. And one of these days, he was riding past, and people were crying in my house. <laughs> and he just stopped, brought his, brought his uh, small little Bible out and came in, just uh, uh, with it through the crowd. And he came and I said, Pastor, please, today is not like any other day. Somebody just died. <laughs> He say, ah, I have been riding my bicycle all through. Till this time, it was about four o'clock. And I want to raise somebody. I say, he, please, I beg you. Don't, don't make a mockery of your God. He said, no, 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 no. I want to wake him up because God has told me in the book. Then he opened the book and read it that, uh, uh, Behold, I have given you power to tread upon serpents, to tread upon scorpions, and to raise the dead. And I said, listen, don't make a mockery of yourself. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal that sin. Raise the dead! I said what? I beg what did I talk? Again! 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 Hey! Do you mean what you say that we can raise dead person? Yes, absolutely. Have you raised dead person before? Um, no. Why? Would you say I can do it? Yes. In the name of Jesus. He <laughs> said, no, 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 come and show me where the baby was. So I said, okay. I took him to the room where the baby was lying. It, it was, she, she was about uh, three years old, three or four, four years old then. And I said, listen. This baby died at about nine, and it's about four o'clock now. The baby is already changing color. The why why he why she was not being buried at this time is that the father has to go to the secretariat to get a death certificate, and he said, "Oh, there's no need for that now. Let's do it. Let's do it." I said, "How? How are you going to do it?" And he said, "Okay, go out if you don't want to see see me do it." But you know. As a stubborn child, then I stood at the I stood at the door. I stood at the door with my back laid at the door. One, one eye on this side and one eye on the front door. And he prayed. Child, be healed. After he prayed, he asked me, what is the name of the child? What's in me the girl name? I said it's Inwarata. 
I'm a living testimony. I give God the glory for keep counting me among the living today. I'm a testimony that the whole world knows about through my father, late Ben Sinidahosa. I was sick about two weeks. After the sick, conversion hold me. So I, I, I died. When I died, they kept me inside one room. So my people was crying, weeping. About two hours, a bit three hours later, my father come, my late Ben Sinidahosa. He said, what is happening? They told him that her daughter, their daughter has lost. They said, what happened to her? He said, she was confused. So they tried the, in the ordinary native daughter tried, they can't raise her back to life. He said, where is her now? He said, she's swallowing there. He said, he asked my father the question. He said, daddy, do you believe that the God I serve can raise him, come back to life? My father said, yes. He said they should take him to the room. Then take him to where they, they lie me down. So carry me, they were praying with some of members. As they pray with God that answered by fire, hear their prayer. I come back to life. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! That is how I'm a living so today. And he just stretched his Bible and himself on that child and said, Inuata, I command you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that has empowered me to raise the dead. Now, come back to life. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Inuata, I command you, rise up! I was just peeping. And all of a sudden, the, the child that died at about nine o'clock sneezed. <laughs> <laughs> Another <laughs> day to me, after a year and three months in the womb. So, my mother passed through many tribulations before she gave back to me. Many said, maybe I'm not a baby, I'm a wood, I'm this, but for God be thy glory. When they gave back to me, I'm, I'm a human being. And after they gave back to me, the devil, the useless man, raised up his ugly head to take my soul away. Do you know I took to my heels? I couldn't stand, I couldn't wait, and I ran out. <laughs> With him to the mother. He said, Please give this child something to eat. And everybody was surprised. Everyone was shocked. Ah, and he just left. And when he left, I, I sat down and I was thinking, What is the thing that made this man to raise this child from the dead? There must be power superpower then i wasn't a child of god my mother used to serve um, she was a princess of olokun shango and all that and i said mm, the, the the power that raised this child from the dead must be a power that surpasses the power of these graven images that has no power so the father just came and we started celebrating, but he was gone. But in the night I sat and I, I started praying and I said, God, if you were the one that raised that child up, just touch me. I have been hearing messages of salvation from here and there. Even the church I, 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 I used to go then, but I just knelt down and I said, Father, 
let Jesus come into my heart right now. And I need to know this power that raised this child. And that was all I prayed. I didn't know how to pray salvation prayer. But I just knelt down and I said, Father, please, if you were the one that raised this child up, let come into my life and let me act and walk and believe like as that young man that we call pastor believed and he did this and you know when i finished prayers there was an abundant joy unspeakable joy in my spirit and the following day uh we, we used to call him brother benson he came I said, where is the child? You said the child is there. And I called him to the room. I said, you know what I did last night? I didn't know. Uh, I, I don't know how to do it, but I just knelt by my bedside. And I said, God, if you were the one that raised that child up, let me have a part of that power. I said, ah, you have done it. And I knelt down, he prayed, and I, and I said the, the sinner's prayer. And that was what got me into where I am now. And I'm glad. Okay, because I'm still alive, my father Benson Delsa is still alive because I'm a living testimony. I'm glad that I, 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 I'm doing what I'm doing now because there was sign, there was wonder, there was, there, there was miracle that got into my heart. Thank God for today I'm alive. I have about eight children, two girls, and two boys, and six girls. He was a man that did everything by faith. I have about ten grandchildren, to the glory of God. Now I understand the, the type of joy. The Bible said that the joy that no man can give, that is the joy that Jesus gives when you give your life to him. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. Listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, 
prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. Thank you for taking the time to watch this powerful video of Archbishop Benson Indaosa. Archbishop Benson Indaosa was a charismatic Pentecostal preacher. He is the founder of Church of God Mission International. Archbishop Benson Indaosa was popularly referred to as the father of Pentecostalism in Nigeria. And I'd like you to know that he was also my spiritual father please do not forget to share this video to bless all the people let this video go viral remain blessed hello this video is about Archbishop Bensi Idaosa his early Christian ministry testimony as a young Christian, I once heard my pastor say during a morning service that Christians could raise the dead in the name of the Lord Jesus. I believe it with my, all my heart. And flying around on my bicycle in those days, I went through the city of Benin in Nigeria in search of a dead person to raise to life. After five hours of hard searching, I found a compound where a little girl had died a few hours before. The corpse had been cleaned and prepared for burial. I walked boldly to the father of the child. The God whom I serve can bring your baby back to life. I told him, will you permit me to pray for the child and bring her back to life? The man was startled, but he agreed. I walked into the room and up to the bed. The child was cold and dead. With strong faith in the Lord, I called on the Lord to restore the child back to life. I turned to the corpse and called it by name. Arise in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, glory to God. The corpse sneezed heavily. Alas, the child had come back to life. God is Bensi Indaosa. Now, Bensi Indaosa childhood. Bensi Indaosa was born in Benin City on September 11, 1938. To a pagan parents. He was a sickly infant who was always fainting. As a result of his constant illness, his father ordered the mother to throw him in the dustbin. When he was 18, year, 18 months old, he was left on a rubbish heap to die. He was rejected by his father, sent to work on a farm as a servant, and was denied education until he was 14 years old. His education was irregular due to the poor financial status of his parents. 
He later took correspondence calls from Britain and the United States while working in Bada Shoe Company. His conversion and call to ministry. His conversion was drastic and his calling supernatural. He was converted by Pastor Akos on a football field on one Sunday afternoon while playing soccer with his teammates. Thus, young, ben young Benson became the first Benin member of Pastor Akbar's small congregation. As a young convert, he became very zealous in winning souls and in conducting outreaches in villages around Benin City. He was called to the ministry in a night vision from the Lord. I have called you that you might take the gospel around the world in my name, preach the gospel, and I will confirm my words with signs following, said the voice from heaven. The room was filled with the presence of God as Benson fell to his knees before the Lord. Wherever you want me to go, I will go. He prayed through the night, renewing his vows to God and interceding for his people who were yet to hear the message of salvation. After his call, Benson launched into ministry, work preaching from village to village. The gospel of, the, of, of Jesus Christ with great power and anointing, more people confess Christ as their Savior and more healings occur as he prayed for the sick. Expansion of his ministry and his credentials. Archbishop Benson Daosa, the Archbishop himself and the founder of Church of God Mission International Incorporated with his headquarters in Benin City, Nigeria, established over 6,000 churches throughout Nigeria, Ghana before 90, 1971. Many of the ministers he supervised pastored churches of 1,000 to 4,000 people. In addition to filling the position of Archbishop of Church of God Mission, he, also, he, he was also President of All Nation for Christ Bible Institute, President of Idaosa World Outreach, and President of Faith Medical Center. He had positions in numerous organizations, including the College of, Bish of Bishop of the International Communion of Christian Churches and the Ora Robot. Uh, university in Oklahoma. It also earned a diploma in divinity from Christ for the Nation Institute in Dallas, Texas, which he attended in 1971, a doctorate of divinity in 1981 from the World Faith College, New Orleans, and a Doctor of Law degree from Ora Robot University in March 1984. He also received another degree. He also received other degrees from the International University in Brussels, Belgium. Archbishop Benson and his wife Margaret Idaosa were blessed with four children. Idaosa Supreme Tax. So winning was Idaosa primary concern with a motto Evangelism Our Supreme Tax. He walked towards his goal of reaching the origin Nigeria, Africa, and the rest of the world with the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. As a black African, he found the doors of African countries were wide open and he ministered in over 133 countries all, 123 countries all over the world. Crusade played a major role in his ministry. He was involved at least one crusade per month. A record crowd of nearly one million people a night attended his Lagos crusade in April 1985. He established the Redemption Television Ministry with a potential viewing audience of 15 million people. What leading gospel minister said about Archbishop Idaosa? According to Mrs. Gordon Father Lisa, President of Christ for the Nation Incorporated, Dallas, Texas, USA. I know of no young black in all Africa who is preaching who is reaching million as Benson is in crusade with hundreds of thousands in attendance in, in, a, in his weekly nationwide telecast, in his Bible school, training eager students from several nations. He also conducted campaigns in Sweden, Singapore, Malaysia, Korea, Australia, and United States, 
where he often appear on national religious telecasts. His burden for souls, his ministry of healing and miracles, even to the raising of several dead, demonstrates is a, a, a demonstrate he is especially called of the Lord in this end time. Dr. Ben Akosa remarked, Benson Daosa is sought after by everyone in the state, from government officials to beggars. When they pose questions and explain their problem to this man, they receive instantaneous miracle solution, just as the people did in Bible days with God's prophet. The people got miraculous answer from, his, from this mighty leader of God's people, said Daniel Oris. Benin City respect and salute this great man of God even at his death. I have been with him on visit to many officials, to the governor, to the powerful Benin tribal kings. He moved with God and his people knows it. His great miracle cathedral, his headquarters sit over 10,000 in 1981. His Bible school attract upper class people from different African nations and also come from Maurice, India, uh, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, Indonesia, Singapore, Philippines, Hong Kong, Japan, Korea, the Middle East, Europe and other nations of the world. A truly international Bible training center of dynamic faith. People know that Bishop Idaosa preached what he practiced. Dr. Idaosa evangelistic ministry has reached nations around the world. He was the first Af black African evangelist to shake Australia in a massive crusade that got national attention. His seminars have affected Christians and church leaders in many countries. I sincerely salute this man because he practiced among his own people what he preached to the world. Bensi Indaosa was a man who believed God's promises and that God's miracle provision applies to Africans as well as to Americans. He believed that Africa has a part in God's work and Africa will reap God's blessing. Evangelist T. S. Bond from Tulsa, Oklahoma remarked, Many who followed Idaosa's teaching have been saved from poverty and have learned to plant out of their have learned how to plant out of their desperate need and to look to God as their divine source, thereby becoming prosperous Christians in their own land. It also rose from the rank of an ordinary man to a world leader's leadership as a pastor, a builder, a counselor, a prophet, a teacher, uh, an apostle, an evangelist, a man of godly wisdom and of Christ-like compassion, whose ministry has blessed million, millions the world over. Idaosa was the greatest African ambassador of the apostolic Christian faith to the world. The secret of his success. Idaosa operated in faith. He had a robust faith. He believed and trusted God with a childlike faith. He once said that living a daily life of absolute faith in God is the only secret to great success. He believed God for everything. All things are possible to him that believes. He spent quality times in prayer and in the study of God's word. He said that if someone spent time studying the Bible and acting on it, people will come looking for that person for life solutions. He also, also spent time studying the works and the lives of other successful people, both in the gospel ministry and other faith of human endeavors. And he applied the principles he learned, he learned from these successful people to his life and ministry. He was very energetic, hardworking. One of the ministers who served under him said that he had never seen a man who worked as hard as Archbishop Benson Daosa. He was committed and consistent, and he had confidence in himself. He was very humble and full of godly wisdom. Archbishop Bensi Idaosa was said to be the leader of over 7 million Jesus people worldwide before he went to be with the Lord in February 1998. 
Now I'm going to talk about his early ministry again. As a youth, he got converted to Christianity by a certain pastor at Paul and joined the flagging congregation as one of the first members. He was very active and converted many to Christianity. After experiencing a revelation from God, calling him into ministry, he began to conduct outreaches from village to village before establish, establishing his church in a store in Benin City. Archbishop Benson Idaosa was well known for many notable quotable quotes, including, My God is not a poor God. Your attitude determines your, your attitude determines your attitude. It is more risky not to take risk. I am a possibilitarian. A big head without a big brain is a big load to the neck. If your faith says yes, God cannot say no. Among others, many of these messages on faith, miracle, and prosperity remain a classic among Pentecostal. He had strong links with international gospel ministers like Billy Graham, T.L.S. Bond, Kenneth Hagin, Penny Inn, Ray Bonke, Maurice Cerullo, Ora Robert, amongst others, and took the gospel to 145 nations in his lifetime. At the time of his death in 1998, he had preached to more white than any black man and to more black than any white man. His desire to meet the need of the total man led him to establish several other arms of the ministry apart from the church. They include Faith, Metaplex, All Nation for Christ Bible Institute, Word of Faith, Group of School, Benson Indaosa University, which is currently under leadership of a son, Reverend E. F. B. Uh, Idaosa. His wife, Margaret uh, Idaosa, is the current Archbishop of the church. It was used by God to perform many miracles, including healing the blinds, raising up 28 people from the dead at different times in his ministry. You must understand this powerful man of God that God used to affect the nation of the world. And I'm glad and privileged that he was my father in the Lord. I am honored to be a part of his anointing, a part of his, of his ministry. I want to ask you, please make sure you share these videos, this video, this particular video to bless all the people and make sure you have enough time to visit Anointed Tube, support Anointed Tube, and let people all over the world around you, your village, your town, your city, your colleagues, your family, your friends, all your contact, get to know about Anointed Tube. So thank you for taking the time to listen to this or, or watch this video. I believe that um, your life can never remain the same because God's servant was such a powerful, powerful, humble, great man of God that God used before he was called to be with him. I, and I'll say it again, I am grateful and I'm privileged to be a son to Archbishop Bensi in the house. The Lord bless you.